What are, what are common misconceptions about green initiatives and what are you doing to educate corporations uh, about what it really means to be green today? The most common misconception is one that's been out there probably since the beginning, is, and that's there's a trade-off between ecology and economy. When realistically, you can't separate the two. Um, and you can't separate the two for a number of reasons. Right. One is because, um, you know, that if you're talking about, you know, the bottom line, there's always an efficiency argument to be made. And that's, that's, that's very, very basic. Um, so, you know, inputs cost money, waste costs money. If you can control pollution, or if you can prevent pollution before you have to control it, that's, you know, instead of paying for uh, treatment or paying for someone to haul it away, you just prevent it from doing it in the first place. This kind of comes from the, you know, the Japanese Kaizen approach. Uh, anything that is muda or waste is bad. Um, so even if you take it to a very basic essence, you've got, you've got that piece of it, which is there, there, there's no trade-off there. Um, and there's been a lot of, you know, scholarship and a lot of consultants that have sort of thought about this a lot and tried to shatter this, this idea of, of, of there being a trade-off. Um, but even more strategically, you know, we're, we're, we're rapidly approaching a world that um, uh, has very few tolerances left that, that we can surpass. And so, um, you know, you can look at uh, preserving a forest as, you know, just something that is purely for the ecology of, uh, of a nation. But in essence, it's, it's also the capital stock of a nation. You know, there, there were some studies that went back to Indonesia in the 90s when they had just outrageous growth. Um, and then some, an economist went in and corrected for the amount that they were cutting into their capital stock, and their, the growth rate went from like 7 or 8% to like 2%. Because what they were doing was, was kind of cutting into their principal instead of, um, instead of living on the interest. And we've done that writ large for a very, very long time. And we're quickly getting to the point where um, we can't cut into the capital much more without it seriously impacting the way that, um, that we live. And so um, our economy is ultimately predicated on a thriving ecology. And without that, you know, companies will be spending a lot of money trying to procure resources. Communities will be spending a lot of money in order to get things like clean water. And we already are. We already are. And so th those two things, um, you, have to, you have to necessarily sort of break that, that trade-off. And, and it, it's really strange because you still hear it. And this is an old argument from the 70s. That at the time, it, it really, I mean, it was, it was a logical argument because if you looked at command and control regulations, um, that was the case. Everything that the government did was going to impose a cost. But companies now that are proactive in the way that regulations are structured that are market-based, um, like the, the, the cap-and-trade SO2 program from the, from the 90s, which ended up costing a tenth of the cost that was estimated and ended up providing you know, hundreds of billions of dollars in, in benefits through improved health uh, of, of, of citizens and through um, infrastructure damage that wasn't, well, infrastructure damage avoided. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it was market friendly. A lot of people made a lot of money trading permits. Um, and, and that's sort of a, a precursor to the carbon market now or really st smartly structured um, regulations that drive innovation rather than um, imposing costs. Got it. And so um, I think fundamentally, uh, you know, th there, there is this, this myth that's still out there. And so what we do is we go into companies and we, um, and we attempt to sort of spell that out. And it's funny because in the last couple of years, that job has gotten way easier. It used to be the pitch. You know, we'd come in and say, look, there is no trade-off. And now we go in and we're meeting with very smart managers and executives that say, yeah, yeah, we know, but tell us what to do. Right. And so um, we rapidly have to change our strategy saying from, you know, sort of telling, you know, trying to teach the lesson that it's not a trade-off to, well, now here's how you exec execute on that strategy effectively. Um, and that's proving both inspiring and challenging.